Hi, I'm Elizabeth. Before we dive into this twist-filled saga of legacy, loss, and a fight for what's right, make sure you like and subscribe for more real-life stories that feel almost too dramatic to be true. Growing up, my father was more than just a parent. He was my closest ally, my confidant. We shared everything from small daily joys to big dreams about the future. His antique shop in the heart of downtown was our little kingdom, where each trinket and treasure had a story, and so did we. Life was simple, filled with contentment, until that inevitable day the phone rang, shattering the peace. Elizabeth, this is urgent. Your father. He passed away last night. Heart attack. I'm so sorry. The voice of our longtime family friend and lawyer, Mr. Thompson, trembled on the other end. The news felt like a cruel prank. Just yesterday, we were laughing over coffee, planning our next big find for the shop. The reality was crushing. The funeral, a blur of faces, condolences, a stream of endless gray days. In the midst of my grief, the phone rang again. This time it was Liam. His voice, unfamiliar and distant, broke through the static of my sorrow. Elizabeth, sorry for your loss, but we need to talk business. I've seen Dad's will. Looks like I'm getting everything. You might want to check with your lawyer, but don't get your hopes up. His words felt like a slap. Liam, who hadn't visited in years, who only called when he needed money, was now claiming everything? It couldn't be right. Our father had always preached fairness, and he knew how much the shop and everything in it meant to me. I don't understand, Liam. Why would Dad do that? It doesn't make any sense. Well, that's how it is. I'm just giving you a heads up. The lawyer will sort it out, but like I said, don't expect much. The call ended with an ominous click, leaving me in a state of shock and betrayal. Was this really my father's will? Could he have dismissed me so easily? Or was Liam twisting the truth for his gain? Determined to find the truth, I called Mr. Thompson back. He was evasive at first, his voice weary. Elizabeth, are you sure you want to get into this now? It's a complicated matter. Yes, I need to know. It's not just about the money or the shop. It's about understanding my father's last wishes. Please, just tell me. After a pause, he sighed. All right, come to my office tomorrow. We'll go over everything. As the chapter closes on a note of uncertainty and impending conflict, I braced myself to face whatever came next, armed with the love and principles my father taught me. The battle for his legacy was just beginning, and I was not about to step down without a fight. The next morning, the office of Mr. Thompson was steeped in a cold, formal air that made the whole situation seem even more surreal. As I sat across from him, his desk cluttered with papers and legal books, I couldn't help but feel a mixture of anticipation and dread. Look, Elizabeth, this is a very unusual situation. When I mentioned your name, I didn't realize... Mr. Thompson's voice trailed off as he shuffled through the papers. What didn't you realize? And what's so unusual? Your father, he made a will shortly before his passing. It seems there's been a significant misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? What kind of misunderstanding? Well, your late sister, Eliza Jane, and you, people often got your middle names mixed up. Liam seems to have misunderstood which daughter was mentioned in the will. And who is mentioned in the will? He hesitated, then handed me a document. You are Elizabeth Jane, not Eliza Jane. It's clearly stated here. As I scanned the document, it indeed listed me, Elizabeth Jane, as the primary beneficiary, with Liam only mentioned in a small note towards the end, receiving a minor portion of the estate. But why would Liam think he's getting everything? Your sister's death was a tragedy that everyone wants to forget. Liam might have assumed her name in the will referred to her as the sole beneficiary, not realizing it was you. His absence during these years didn't help his understanding. Frustrated and a bit angry, I knew I needed more specific legal advice. I thanked Mr. Thompson and made my way to another lawyer, Miss Henderson, known for her no-nonsense approach to estate law. Entering Miss Henderson's office felt like stepping into a stark contrast from Mr. Thompson's. Her office was sleek, modern, with every item meticulously organized. Elizabeth, I've reviewed the documents you sent over. There's no doubt about it. The estate is legally yours. If Liam challenges this, he won't have a leg to stand on in court. But why would my father not make this clearer, to avoid this whole mess? Sometimes the intentions are clear to the person making the will, but to others, not so much. 
Your father probably never imagined this scenario. Armed with this new information, I knew I had to confront Liam. I dialed his number, heart pounding with a mix of anger and resolve. You need to look at the will again, Liam. It's me, Elizabeth Jane, not Eliza Jane. There's no way. Dad told me he was going to leave everything to me. Why would he leave anything to you? The will doesn't say what you think it does. I'm the primary beneficiary, not our sister, and certainly not you as the sole heir. You're lying. You must have changed it. I'll get my lawyers. I'll fight this. Read the will, Liam. It's plain as day. And fighting this will only waste your time and money. The call ended with a heavy silence on his end, a mix of disbelief and, perhaps, the beginning of realization. The stage was set for a battle, not just over assets, but over the truth and memory of our father's real intentions. After my call with Liam, it was clear that words alone wouldn't suffice. I gathered all the necessary documents, copies of the will, legal interpretations, and correspondence with both lawyers. Miss Henderson advised me to keep everything on record for what might become a legal battle. I packed everything into a briefcase, my resolve as firm as the evidence stacked in my favor. The next day, I arranged to meet Liam at Dad's house, the place where our memories and Dad's legacy lay in every corner. When I arrived, Liam was already there, pacing back and forth in the living room, a storm of anger and confusion on his face. You really going to fight me on this, Elizabeth? Dad wanted me to have it all. You're just... You're just messing everything up. Liam, you're my brother, and I don't want to fight. But you're wrong about Dad's intentions. Look at these documents. It's all there, black on white. I handed him the papers, but he barely glanced at them, tossing them onto the coffee table. This is just paper, Dad told me. He told me everything was mine. You think these lawyers know more about Dad than his own son? Liam, being absent doesn't give you the right to rewrite history. You weren't here. You didn't hear his plans, his thoughts. I did. And so did these lawyers who helped him draft his final wishes. He picked up the documents again, this time actually flipping through them. His eyes narrowed as he read, his face a mask of frustration and realization. So what? You think just because Dad scribbled something on a piece of paper, it erases everything he ever said to me? Documents don't lie, Liam. Dad's illness, his worry about the future... Maybe he changed his mind. Maybe he wanted to make sure everything was settled fairly. Fairly? You call this fair? I'm his son too, Elizabeth. Yes, you are. And so was I his daughter. We both deserve to respect his actual words, not what we wished he had said. The tension between us was palpable, a thick fog of unresolved grief and brewing conflict. Liam sat down heavily, the papers still in his hand, his eyes not meeting mine. So what now? We gonna drag this out in court? You gonna drag the family name through the mud for this? I don't want a court battle, Liam, but I won't back down. This is about honoring Dad's wishes. It's about truth and integrity. Maybe, maybe we need a mediator, someone neutral to help us sort this out. He was silent for a long moment, the fight going out of him as he continued to read the documents. Finally, he looked up, his expression softened, weariness taking over. Maybe you're right. Maybe I... I got it all wrong. Let's... Let's talk about this. Really talk. No lawyers, no threats. Just you and me. It wasn't an apology. Not really. But it was a start. A crack in the armor he had built around himself. Around the grief and greed that had clouded his judgment. Okay, Liam. Let's talk. For Dad. For us. The confrontation ended not with a battle, but with an uneasy truce. The documents laid out between us a testament to a legacy that was meant to bind, not divide. Sitting across from Liam at the old oak table where we'd shared countless meals with Dad, the air was thick with a mix of regret and tentative hope. So, you think we can just divide everything? Like splitting toys when we were kids? I think it's more about honoring Dad's intentions than just dividing stuff, Liam. It's about continuing what he started, the shop, the collections. He loved those more than anything. You really believe that? That the shop is more important than the money it could bring if we sold it? It's not just a shop, Liam. It's a part of who Dad was. And it's a part of us, too. Doesn't that mean anything to you? He paused, looking around as if seeing the shop for the first time. Maybe. I guess I never saw it that way. I just saw the end numbers. The value in dollars. 
It's been a long time since I felt like part of this. That's because you chose to stay away, but it's not too late to be part of it, to make things right. Right? How do we make this right, Elizabeth? After everything that's been said and done? We start by respecting Dad's will. We use the inheritance as he wanted. We keep the shop running, and we use the proceeds to fund the charity he dreamt of starting. A charity, huh? Dad really wanted that? Yes, he did. For kids who can't afford legal representation. He always said everyone deserved a fair chance. Just like he wanted us to have a fair chance at his legacy. You really think we can work together after all this? I think it's what Dad would have wanted. And it's the best way to keep his memory alive. As we talked, the idea of turning our inheritance into something meaningful seemed to take root in Liam. The bitterness that had once clouded his judgment began to clear replaced by a cautious curiosity about the possibilities. Okay, let's say we do this. We run the shop, start the charity. But what about us? Can we really just put everything behind us? I want to try, Liam, for Dad's sake, and maybe for ours, too. We used to be a team, remember? He nodded slowly, the semblance of a smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. Yeah, I remember. Maybe, maybe we can try that again. The conversation marked a turning point. It wasn't just about dividing an estate anymore, but about rebuilding a fractured relationship and honoring a beloved father's legacy. As we left the table that day, it felt like we were stepping into a new chapter, not just for the shop or the upcoming charity, but for us as siblings. The fallout from our confrontation began to settle, and in its place, a plan to move forward together took shape. It was going to be a long journey, filled with challenges, no doubt, but for the first time in a long time, it felt like we were on the right path. Months had passed since Liam and I decided to honor our father's legacy the way he would have wanted. The shop was thriving again, bustling with old and new faces, each piece of memorabilia holding a story dear to someone's heart. Look at this place, Elizabeth. You were right. Keeping it was a good call. Feels like Dad's still here somehow. It does, doesn't it? And next week, we launch the charity. Dad would have been so proud, Liam. The charity. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. It's a big step. You think we're ready? We have to be. It's not just about us anymore. It's about giving back, helping those kids get a fair shot, just like Dad wanted. As we prepared for the launch, the final touches were being put on the charity's headquarters next door to the shop. The Edward James Foundation for Youth Legal Aid would offer free legal services to underprivileged youth, a cause close to our father's heart. Remember how Dad used to help out at the community center? He always said, justice shouldn't only be for those who can afford it. Liam nodded, looking over the pamphlets and posters lining the walls. He did say that. And we're making it happen, Elizabeth. You? You really took his dream and ran with it. It was his dream, but it's our project, Liam. We're doing this together. The day of the launch arrived with a flurry of activity. Local media, community leaders, and residents gathered, buzzing with excitement and curiosity. Standing at the podium, looking out at the crowd, I felt a surge of pride and a pang of missing Dad, wishing he could see us now. Today, we open the doors to the Edward James Foundation for Youth Legal Aid, a testament to a man who believed in justice and fairness for everyone. This foundation is not just a tribute to our father, but a commitment to the community he loved and served. Applause broke out, echoing through the hall, as Liam joined me on stage, his presence a strong, supportive force. You know, Elizabeth, I never told you this, but I'm sorry for how I acted after Dad passed. I was lost in more ways than one. It's okay, Liam. We were both lost. But look at what we found when we decided to work together. As the event continued, I mingled with guests, explaining our mission, our goals. But more than the words, it was the feeling of doing something meaningful, something bigger than ourselves, that filled me with peace. Later, as the guests thinned and the night settled in, I took a moment alone in the shop, running my fingers over the items, each a memory, each a piece of the puzzle that was Dad's life, and now, our lives. I hope we're doing you proud, Dad, I whispered into the quiet, feeling a sense of closure, of peace. Our journey had been fraught with challenges, but here we were, building on the legacy left to us, not just preserving it, but letting it grow, 
transform into something that would help others for years to come. This wasn't just a new foundation for the charity, but for Liam and me, for our relationship rebuilt on shared goals and renewed respect. And as I locked up the shop that night, I knew that while the road ahead might bring new challenges, it would also bring new triumphs. And that was something truly worth striving for. Now that our story has reached its conclusion, I have a question for all of you. Do you believe it's always possible to rebuild trust and collaborate effectively after a serious family conflict, like Elizabeth and Liam did? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this journey and want more, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more intriguing stories. Your support helps us bring these narratives to life.